Welcome back, everybody. My next guests have won 13 Grammy Awards, sold over 30 million records worldwide, and they're making new music after a 14-year hiatus. Please welcome the Chicks. Hello, Chicks. Hi. Thanks for being here. Natalie, Marty, Emily, nice to see you. You too. Now, what people at home don't know is that um, in the, on the night of the last show that we did in the theater before we had to bug out because of the coronavirus, you were supposed to be my guest that night. Yes. And instead, uh, Sanjay Gupta came in and uh, <laughs> just rocked all your hits. <laughs> did he know Gaslighter? Oh, he, Goodbye Earl. He knew Goodbye Earl. I know that one. But I didn't know he could play the banjo. Anyway, it's so nice to see you. But it was so long ago um, that it was so long ago that back then you were called the Dixie Chicks. And after 31 years, you've changed to the Chicks. Tell me why you changed your name now. Well, just because of everything that's going on in the world, it was about time. We had wanted to change it for a long time, actually. And we started using DCX a lot and the Chicks a lot when we could. Uh, we hoped it would catch on, but it didn't. <laughs> so um, in the moment now, we just uh, felt that it was right. And we didn't even have to you know, have much discussion about it. We just all wanted to do it right away. And so we did. Well, that's great. Were, were, was it always going to be the Chicks or were there other contenders for the name? We had to make sure we had our ducks in a row legally, but in the meantime, we thought the Chicks would be the easiest thing, but we did have to entertain a few other things. Um, one of the ones that came up was uh, our initials that spelled out as men, so we'd go from Chicks to men. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Marty, Emily, Natalie, got it. Yeah, anything else? <laughs> Well, we had some names in the past that we would call ourselves kind of as our alter egos, and we could have pulled those from the past. One was um, Puss in Boots. Okay. <laughs> I think there's already a band called that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Wooly Puddin. What was that last one? <laughs> Wooly Puddin. Wooly Puddin. Okay. I like it. <laughs> a few people have uh, tweeted out some criticism of the name change. Most people have really liked it, uh, but there are a couple people out there. Sean Spicer said, the Dixie Chicks are dropping Dixie from their name and now will just be called the Chicks, but some women might find that offensive, so I propose they just go by the. <laughs> and some, some clown called Senator Ted Cruz said, band trying to sell country records tells the entire South to, I assume, off adopts a diminutive term for women instead. Any response to these fellas? <laughs> peace and love, peace and love. <laughs> the last time I saw you folks was at 2006 for the Time 100 dinner. Yeah. And, and we didn't talk for very long, but one of the things that we could appreciate about each other is getting in some trouble for saying things about George W. Bush, because it was about a week after I'd done my correspondence dinner speech. Uh, uh -huh. down in, in Washington. And that was in 2006 when no one was really criticizing him publicly. And, and you guys had done it three years before in 2003. And I, I admire that you spoke your mind. And you, and, and obviously history has proven you right uh, uh, about being dragged into a boondoggle in, in Iraq under false pretenses and all the, the, the chaos and the tragedy that caused. Um, you say it's one of the best things that ever happened to you as a band, even though there was enormous backlash and there were threats against you and there was a boycott. Why was it one of the best things that happened to you? It, it was kind of liberating to know that our audience knew who we were and what we thought. Um, we've always been very liberal and um, spoken our minds, but that was just the one moment where Natalie said that and a firestorm erupted. Um, but yeah, it just, it kind of felt like, okay, the cat's out of the bag and that's who we are. And how, how could we not be being patriotic to worry about the troops in harm's way um, with the invasion? It was just kind of ironic that people were saying not what she said, but that she didn't support the troops. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you ask people, I don't even know if they know what she said. It was so innocuous, you know. Well, you, you, you have a new way to talk about how you feel. The new album, Gaslighter, comes out tomorrow. It was supposed to be released in May,
but then had to be put on hold because of the COVID crisis. What was that like to not uh, create an album of new music together for 14 years and then be ready to show to the world and have to hit the brakes at the last minute? What was that, what was that process or what was that feeling like? That was a huge bummer. I think mostly, I mean, we were really excited and we are really excited for our fans to hear the new album. But we also were following that up with a tour. We were supposed to be on tour this summer. Our first show was supposed to be June 6th. Um, both of my sons have bands and um, they're awesome musicians and they were gonna open for us. So yeah, like the rest of the world, uh, plans changed and things changed. But um, I, for the album release, I actually think uh, it's been good. I think we needed a few more months to really get everything <laughs> uh, together and release it how we want to. But yeah, it's interesting. We'll see um, you know, how it goes. Well, the single that some of the audience watching right now may already know is March March, which is a, a really powerful protest anthem. And it seems so fitting to the moment we're in right now. When did you actually write that? A couple years ago. It was one of the first ones we started. It took us a while to get the production on it and get it the way it is on the album. But the lyrics were basically written two years ago. Um, and we had That's been- extra That's extraordinary because in some ways, what you, what that, that song seems like it was written yesterday. I don't know. It's crazy. And we, we did want to put it out at this time because we felt like it, it lent itself to the times right now and the Black Lives Movement. Um, but we had gone to March for Our Lives in Washington, D.C. with our families and um, seen that, that entire movement. And it was like... I don't know, it's the most powerful thing I've ever been a part of. And we wanted to write about that. Um, and that was the impetus for the song. But yeah, it's, it's eerie how much it pertains right here, right now. You, know? you guys are performing March, March in just a moment. Uh, stick around, everybody. We will have more chicks. Thanks, y'all.